If you're looking for a brand new piano sound to help inspire your music writing process, then Westwood Instruments Lost Piano just might be for you. So a little over a week ago, Westwood Instruments reached out to me and actually gave me early access to their most recent release, Lost Piano. And I'm still very new to having companies reach out, offering products, so I'm still a little blown away and completely honored to be given the chance to even just try this out. Now, just to clarify, I am recording this video just before its official release, but I still wanted to give you my first impressions. So we're gonna be going through this for the first time together. Now, I'm personally not too familiar with Westwood Instrument products. So for me, this is as much of an introduction to the company as it is to this library. But with that said, I'm super excited to give it a go. So once you purchase Lost Piano, you're also gonna have to register it with Native Access, which is pretty typical with any um, sample library that runs through Contact. But what's really nice about this library is that you don't need the full version of Contact. This will actually work on Contact's free player, which is perfect because that's what I will be using. So once you open up a session in your DAW of choice, I'll be using Logic. I added a contact instrument, so the player instrument, and it should show up on my list, Westwood and Lost Piano. Okay, so this is a very nice uh, kind of layout. It is a bit wide. I think I can adjust in here, but that just makes it uh, shorter. But it's still a very nice layout. I like the design, the gray up top, but kind of uh, white-ish in the middle. And it looks like you can kind of sample between A and B. A being one sample. So detune tape, detune tape. You turn on both, you're just gonna get detune tape. You know what, before I do a single thing, let me just hear what it sounds like. Okay, very nice. The blend right now doesn't matter because they're both on detune tape, you know? Should be the same thing. But if I were to search, you have a bunch of different sets of piano sounds to play with. What I do know is that they offer 32 different sounds. 24, uh, the first three rows, are specifically like piano sound recordings, but the last eight, I believe, are more like textures. Right now we're on detune tape. If I were to go to B and then maybe latitude, and you get a little preview knob, which is pretty cool too. So I'll load that. This is detune tape again. And this is latitude. But if we were to go somewhere in the middle, All right, so that's really, really nice. It looks like you can kind of just go uh, next or previous. From Detune Tape, you can go to the next one, which is AC Tremolo, Breath Out. So you can kind of search there, or you could just use the search function that we did before. And you can also get a randomizer, which is really nice if you just want immediate inspiration. You don't want to be too technical about what you're picking. It's really cool that you can adjust the volume level, the panning, the tuning on either side. And you can adjust the sync or just free time. Uh, you can adjust the different sine wave, saw wave. Um, so that's cool. The motion, I, I think, I think this is dependent on motion. But if we were to go to mood, it does change. So you can kind of change the mood. We're on yearning right now, but temper. Definitely sounds like an overdrive type, you know? And you can assign MIDI CC automation. So if you wanted to mess with that while recording, you could. You could muse, awe, void, blur, softer sound and back to urine. Okay, and it looks like you can do motion and mood at the same time.
So this is really cool so far. Right out of the box, you can just adjust as much as you want without really digging in. We have not checked out any of these other tabs just yet. So you have a lot of flexibility so far. And what I do know um, kind of before even opening up the library is that this is meant to be something new. It's not gonna be just your average upright piano. According to the overview that I did receive, it's not a synthesizer, but neither is it really a piano anymore. It's really created for experimentation. And I can easily see that right from the start. You know, I, I can randomize that and I get something totally different, you know? Randomize again. Latitude and latitude. Um, randomize again, breath out. So that gives me really quick access to something unique, you know? The chances of me getting the exact same sound as another composer is gonna be very, very low. And we see that with the A versus B, with all of these different tweaks and knobs and the blend, you know? It's just gonna be so hard to get the exact same sound as somebody else. And that's a good thing. We don't wanna sound like other composers. So that is great. All right, so now that we got the sounds tab out of the way, uh, let's check out process. So this is kind of like your typical just um, ADSR, overdrive, compression, uh, rotator, chorus, all the effects basically. This is your effects tab. So I usually won't mess with ADSR too much unless there's something specific going on in my writing and I feel like a sound is a bit too harsh with the attack, then I might go in and adjust that and bring it up a little bit. But usually I don't mess with that too much. Uh, you have your wow, which is already turned on and it looks like you can go between A and B, so both, and then just B itself. Let's adjust the speed a little bit, maybe eighth notes. That's weird. <laughs> That's more like an effect there, right? Like it doesn't, you don't hear it going back and forth too much. Your saw, square, random. We're not recording, so I don't think we really noticed that versus sync. But then this is specifically the, the latitude. Kind of weird. Let's go back to quarter. And not so much. I don't like it too noticeable. Cool. Uh, we can do flutter. versus all right uh compressor which i'm assuming just acts as a basic compressor really compressed. All right. Overdrive. I'm assuming we're going to get like a really crunchy kind of sound like that. And that's more on the low end. And how aggressive do we want to be, right? And that's just B, but A and B. Ooh, there's almost like a metallic reverb in the background. All right, so rotator. Right there, you can kind of... All right.
right, and then chorus, which has already been on. Um, all right, so all of these little things kind of give your music uh, a little bit of character, I think. Um, and I love that we can kind of, we've, we've just been on B right now, but we can go back and forth and all of this changes to A versus A and B. And then B versus A and B. All right, so now I wanna go over to the Memories tab. Uh, right now, it nothing is turned on as we can see from this, but I believe this is kind of meant to be an engine in itself. It's gonna come up with different patterns and presets that you can kind of apply uh, right now it's turned off, but if we were to turn it on um, and it's blended between, I guess this is the samples that we're playing versus the patterns, I would assume. And you can hear the piano kind of going back and forth and the actual samples. versus just. And there's no pattern going on with just that. So a blend is obviously the way we wanna go, maybe even a little bit more that way. Oh, and I kinda like that it has a definition. Memories, events, experiences, and feelings remembered from the past. It has different presets, so rapid eye movement, memory box, daymares, forgotten youth, old plectrums, real recall, and a few more on top of the different patterns that you can apply, I guess, to those presets. Rising up, falling down, large waves, small waves. Versus something like in fives. Awesome, uh, but then it looks like there's like a, a web of controls and knobs that you can really start tweaking some things like obviously attack and decay. There's a damp knob, variation, uh, mist versus echo. And it looks like that on echo becomes age, but on mist becomes depth. Awesome, so you can really mess around with that. Density, scatter, and rate. Awesome, and then this upper octave and lower octave looks like it's meant to, I guess, extend the range, so maybe There we go. So that's really nice. And obviously there's a bunch of presets to go through. So this is really kind of like your built-in arpeggiator and maybe even a delay. But I feel like this, I, I would use this more than just like an arpeggiator plugin, you know? Like you have a lot more control and that control is specific to this particular library. So you have a lot that you can do just within one engine, which is within one library, you know? So there's just so much that you can actually do and find different sounds just with memories, you know? And so the last tab that we see is the places tab. And this is gonna be kind of the environment that you place your samples in. So obviously reverb is automatically there and it looks like you get 12 different reverbs uh, and different locations. Kellerman's, uh, Park Hyatt, Technoir, Black Lodge, Milk Bar. Baltimore Hospital. Uh, you have your standard delay, but with five different types. Oh, well, ping pong as well, but analog, vintage, tape, 
Oh, so the ping pong is dependent on which you choose. Modern versus analog. Vintage. Awesome, haze. And how much you wanna saturate. Okay, so the knobs vary depending on the type of delay that you pick. And so next up, I wanna focus on ambiance, which will give us room, hall, city, forest, ocean, and rain. I believe this is, once we turn it on, this kind of puts us in each environment and we can adjust the level, the pitch, low pass, high pass. So let's see what that sounds like. Right now with it on, you can play, right? And only until we bring up uh, the 0.8 dB is when we hear the noise of the room. But other than that, we don't really hear it too much. What's cool is that you can adjust the pitch. I Maybe mean, let's go to hall. That one we can hear. We raise the pitch, lower the pitch. And it's by semitones. And we can change the low pass versus high pass. Awesome, okay. City. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I don't know if I would uh, really bring up the level too much. I don't want it to take away from the music, but it really gives a, a a little bit more character to the the ambiance of the music, which I love. And you can even, without messing with the level too much, you can change things up with just low pass and high pass. How much do you want to be heard? Let's go to forest. Oh, I love this. What I really, really appreciate is uh, in creating this library, you know, the team probably went out and recorded a forest, just the forest sounds, you know, and sampled it. Um, maybe went out to the ocean or uh, when it was raining, you go to the city, you're in a hall. So I love that you can almost be there with your music. And I definitely appreciate just the effort that was put into this. ocean, rain. I don't hear it too much. There it is. Yeah, I that I'm 100% using. I love that. And then we have noise. So I'm assuming this is gonna be similar to what we just heard, but with um, different mediums of how the music is being played. So is it through tape, real, static, vinyl, preamp, or machine? So let's turn that on. And that's machine noise. You got vinyl. That's really cool, actually. Um, Real tape. Static. Like the radio. And preamp. Awesome. So yeah, like I said, I don't know if I would adjust the level and bump it up that much, but I would want it to just be a, a thin little layer in the background because I don't want it to take away from the music. That's the thing. But I absolutely love that this is just an option for you. And all of this reverb, delay, ambiance, and noise all falls under places. All right, so that's everything in the Lost Piano Library. I am a huge, huge fan, and there's still so much that we haven't really uh, touched. Like, there are 32 
different sets of sounds that you can mess with and mix and match, you know? So I think this is a great library. It's definitely not like your standard piano library if that's what you're interested in, but you are going to get plenty of ambient sounds uh, with this specific library and more than just kind of like presets, you know? you have so much control over what you are playing. And that's what I really appreciate with this library. And one of my favorite parts still, I mentioned this already, was uh, in places. I really love the amount of effort put into kind of recording the different locations. I think that's a little bit more unique. Uh, I don't think you get that with too many other sample libraries other than maybe like reverb and the rooms that each sound is recorded in. That's kind of cool. But the fact that you can actually add the noise into the background, I really found that pretty cool. I do want to point out that right now, as of this release date, the Lost Piano is at a special launch price, but I don't believe that launch price will last forever. It might increase. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely go check it out sooner rather than later. Again, I want to thank Westwood Instruments for reaching out to me. That was super cool. I'm Like I said, I'm still blown away. Uh, I'm not used to companies reaching out. And if you are brand new to this channel, I want to encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new content like this. And if you found this video useful or you got value out of it, then definitely give it a like as well. And if you did make it this far into the video, drop a comment down below with your favorite thing about this library. I think mine is still probably places, but the memories engine is also pretty up there. And if you're interested, I actually have a free reference guide that is meant to help musicians compose in a bunch of different genres for film, television, and games. It's in the description down below, so definitely check that out. All right, so that's gonna be it from me. I'll see you guys in the next one, and as always, happy composing.